When I showed this prototype of my custom router on Homelab subreddit earlier this year, people went nuts. And I mean that in the best possible way. Result of that reaction? Well, it appears it'll become a product you'll actually be able to buy. Not just yet, but we'll get there. Together. When I started this channel, I knew I had to do a ton of homework. Not just on technical aspects such as microphones, lights and cameras, but also about topics I'd like to discuss with my audience. So naturally, I had to ask myself, what am I good at? Well, I'm good at making things. Case in point, this is my keyboard, which I designed from the ground up. The case, which is fully aluminium, the anodization, feet, gaskets, screws, and yes, even the PCB. Though I don't have Altium designer or KiCad PCB designing tool experience, I have a friend that's expert in those areas, so he helped me out. And when I was done with the design, I had to find manufacturers or companies that would actually manufacture all the components in a reasonable amount of time. Why am I saying that? Well, because most manufacturing companies take orders in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, or even millions of whatever they're producing. And then there was me asking if they could make me 50 feet, for example. Not all of them said yes, but eventually I found the ones that did. And even then, well, I had to wait, sometimes even months in order for them to find an empty slot, which they'd fill my tiny order to fill with. When I revealed it on Reddit, I knew I could deliver on my promise of turning it into an actual router, but something didn't add up. You see, CNC machining is usually very expensive, which is why most electronic equipment is plastic. But I absolutely love aluminium enclosures for my gear, so I really, really, really wanted to have an aluminium router. But that decision highlighted a couple of problems that needed to be solved if I was to choose this path. First, the case itself. It currently measures 21 by 21 by 4.5 centimeters, add about one centimeter on each axis and you get dimensions of the raw aluminum block that you CNC mill from. We're looking at roughly 2.6, 2.7 liters. This is relevant because for the most part, electronic enclosures are usually made of aluminum with designation 6061 or similar, with density of around 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. That's a seven kilogram block of aluminum, which currently costs around seven euros per kilogram. That's almost 50 euros for the raw material before we even started doing anything with it. See the problem? If not, think about the fact you can buy finished off-the-shelf routers that cost less than that. Granted, they aren't anything special. There I say they're mostly crap, mm -hmm. but still, you get the point. Now add roughly 120 euros worth of machining time, another 80 euros for anodization to make it blue or any other color for that matter. And we're looking at more than 250 euros just for the case alone. Yeah, and the problems don't stop there. You see, if we put a gigabit capable motherboard inside, it starts to make even less sense. Why? because those can be had for anywhere between 100 or 200 euros. And I'm not talking some cheap off-brand ones, I'm talking about Asus, ASRock, MSI and the likes. You see the problem now? If not, let me say it out loud. It makes no financial sense that the case itself is more expensive than the PCB inside. That unfortunately meant I had to go back to the drawing board. Or fortunately, as I'm about to show you. The first objective? Fix the price ratio between the case and the PCB by A, making the motherboard, well, more expensive and B, making the case cheaper. Let's focus on the motherboard first. How does one make a certain thing more expensive? Well, you add features. I started to look at motherboards with 10 gigabit connectivity because that's what I personally look at them as I believe that's the future of home networks. This means I solved the problem of the pricing ratio between the two, right? Well, yes and no. 10 gigabit router or server optimized motherboards cost anywhere from 600 to 8, even 1000 euros. So if I wanted to sell them as part of my router, I would need to put some margin on that. Now combine it with the price of the case and you come to a price you know nobody in their right mind would pay for this product. Especially from someone who has yet to prove their ability to make a high quality networking device. Back to the drawing board, again. And this is where I turned my attention back to the case. And one day, my friend, who's also a CNC machinist that made both this case and my keyboard, 
asked what turned out to be the most important question in this journey so far. Can you make it smaller? This question made me spend days looking into what kind of motherboard formats exist beyond Mini ITX. And surprisingly, for industrial purposes, there's quite a few. I won't go into any of them, but I will leave the link in the description so you can check them out for yourself. The one that kind of caught my attention the most was 3.5 inch SBC form factor, which measures roughly 146 by 102 millimeters. And that was kind of an aha moment for me. If my router had one of those motherboards and supported 10 gig connectivity, the ratio between the two most expensive parts would be perfect. Actually, let's do the math again. This case requires approximately 2.7 liters of aluminum at 50 euros. But with the smaller 3.5 inch motherboard, we're looking at around 17 by 15 by 5 centimeters, which brings us just over 1.3 liters. That is half of the volume of the original case and half the price of the raw material. We're not as lucky with the machining price because, well, there are fixed costs attached to that kind of work, but still, we can most likely get it at least down to around 70 to 80 euros from the initial 120. And don't forget to add to that the lower price of anodization, and we're looking at around 150 euros for the case, rather than 250. Now that is a very significant difference, regardless of how you look at it. Main problem solved, right? Well, no. As it currently stands, there are no high quality 3.5 inch motherboards with 10 gig connectivity and an ARM processor that would support running an open source solution like OpenSense or ViOS. Which gets us to the most important announcement of this video. I will be making my own 3.5 inch motherboard with an ARM processor and 10 gigabit connectivity. And I'll transparently document every step of this journey here with you. So if you're planning a new product or even have done it already, go ahead and subscribe. I'll probably mess a lot of things up. And even if I completely fail, I'll document that too. And since I haven't reported anything on this project since May or June, I believe, a lot has actually happened between then and now, so let me bring you up to speed. The first, and I think the most important thing, was me meeting the director of a hardware incubator called Catapult, with a K. It's a one-of-a-kind incubator because they offer people like me cheap or even free access to some very advanced machinery we normally couldn't afford at this stage of development. CNC milling? Check. Laser cutting? Check. 3D printing, check. PCB manufacturing, pick and place, certification, check, check, check. The last one, the certification, is especially important. You have probably seen the CE sign on all of your electronic devices, even the back of your iPhone has one. It stands for Consumer Electronics, and in a nutshell, it means that the device meets the safety, health and environmental protection requirements. And it's not the certificate itself that is expensive, it's all the testing that has to be performed in order to receive it. And just so you have a ballpark feeling, Consumer Electronics certification for devices without wireless functionalities costs tens of thousands of euros. Add Wi-Fi to that or Bluetooth and it's measured in hundreds of thousands of euros. Ouch. To alleviate that pain, Catapult has their own testing facilities that their members can either use completely free or for some very reasonable fee. And most often there's no or very little waiting time. You need to measure something, you go there and do it. You need something 3D printed, send the design, get in the car, and it will most likely be done before you even get there. It's like using cheat codes. Same as clicking that like button is like using cheat codes for YouTube. So do your boy a solid and click it now. No, no, don't worry, I'll wait. Thank you. A couple of months ago, this incubator had one of their pitch days and the director, his name is Yerne, said I should totally apply. So I applied, prepared my slides and presented the idea to about 50 people in the room. And a week after, I received an email saying I was accepted. Go be. The celebration was short-lived and rightfully so, as that's when the real work began. First order of business, make a business plan. Because every business idea needs one. Not because a business plan is accurate, in fact, they very rarely survive the first contact with the market, 
but because writing one forces you to look at all aspects of the product you're about to build what the market size looks like, what your potential buyers are, uh, what your unfair advantage is, who your competition is and what they're doing, what the main risks are and so on and so forth. The most important part of the business plan, well, at least if you intend to fundraise for your project, which I totally do, is the financial plan, which I won't go into details right now because it warrants its own video. For now, let's just say that in a financial plan, you have to look at how you're gonna make money and how you're gonna spend it. The latter is often much higher at the early stages of any given product's lifetime, but you make up for it, for the difference in time, and hopefully significantly surpass it at some point in the future. Financial plans look at things such as salaries, office rents, expenses, hardware development, software development, production certification, even lawyers and accountants. And on the income side, you look at how many units, in my case routers, you have to sell in order to well make a profit. Now let me be very clear, all these numbers are guesswork, but that doesn't mean they're wrong either, especially because you're most likely making a product that's solving a problem in the domain you already know a lot about. For example, how big, say, salaries are, or how much you already pay for an accountant or a lawyer. But just in case, in order to make it even more accurate, you should get yourself a mentor or an advisor someone from the industry, preferably someone who's done something similar before. If nothing else, to play the devil's advocate to your optimism and keep you grounded. Or to pick you up when you're feeling demotivated. It happens to all of us. Now, interestingly enough, my mentor was introduced to me by the director of Catapult even before I was a member because, and get this, he had already developed a router in his previous job. The mentor, not the director. One he received a Red Dot Award for. We immediately connected because obviously we share the same passion for networking gear. Unfortunately, I can't disclose who it is yet, but I will try and get him to this channel at least to say hi. He's watching this video, so he's getting the message. I have already written mine and I will walk you through it in one of the upcoming videos, but as a teaser, I'll let you in on a little secret. By far, the most important numbers in my financial plan, and I imagine in plenty others, are the cost of production, so how much it costs to make a single unit or a thousand of them, there's a difference. Margins, which is the difference between how much a unit costs to produce and what we sell it for. And finally, the number of units sold. So what we're going to do in the next video in this series is focus on the first of those numbers cost of production. We'll draw a block diagram, assemble a bill of materials and calculate the margins which will then serve as the framework for most of the future decisions. And I will also explain why. So make sure you're subscribed because I'd like you all to be my devil's advocates or pick me up when I'll need it. If you've been watching this video up to this point, I have a small request. Can you please let me know if you like this kind of content? Would you like more of it or less? Also, is there something in particular you'd like to learn? Go ahead and write it all down in the comments. I read each and every one of them. Not that there's that many of them, but still, have a good one.